Hello commanders, this is Admiral uh, out for another live stream here. Today we're going to be talking about prestige, what it's good for, uh, how do you get it, it's, uh, you know, why is it important, and what's the best way to use it. Uh, so let's dive right in. Here you can see uh, some great things. Actually, you know what, while we just get started, let's bring up the uh, stream chat. So that way I can monitor and review your guys' questions while I go through this. Yeah, so today we're really going to be, um, I mean, prestige, you know, the reason why I'm making this video today is because uh, I was talking with some people and I said, so what did you guys spend your prestige on? And they were telling me, oh, I crafted cruxes, I needed those resources, and I died a little inside. I cried, you know, I, it broke my heart because you really, I mean, besides maybe one crux and one character for the achievements, you're pretty much not going to ever want to craft characters or runes with your prestige. Pretty much. I mean, it has to be dire circumstances. And so I thought, okay, well, you know, hopefully they're making prestige, right? So I ask, like, you know, are you guys building your commerce hubs? Like, how much prestige per hour are you going to make? Are you guys making? And they're like, uh, I don't have any commerce hubs, or I'm making 1.2 prestige an hour. And again, you know, I just die a little inside. So uh, we are going to go over prestige. And I may or may not be delaying you slightly. So that way I can get my stream chat up. And yep, yeah, we're good to go. Feel free to say hi. I think I can see you guys now. All right, so uh, we're on the dev server here. As you can see, I am all by my lonesome self. Um, and we're going to go over prestige. Uh, first, let's take a look at the stat right here, prestige. Allows you to acquire new cards, break down cards in the inventory to increase your prestige. That's not the only way you can increase your prestige. Um, let's start with the store. Um, <laughs> start with the store. I like yep, it. You better believe it. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so, um, Commander Overhaul, you can use these to re-roll your daily challenges. Okay. Uh, as you can see here, when you first start the game, all you can get are level 1s. Um, the higher level daily achieve you can get to higher level uh, daily rewards as you build additional stations or as, as you hit uh, level uh, increased levels in increments of 10 so at level 10 you can reach level 2 mission uh, dailies at level 20 level 3 dailies and so on and so forth um, and so as you start getting access to these higher level dailies, you will be able to get higher uh, rarity cards from those dailies. And so you may use commander overhauls, which you can buy in the store, but you can use commander overhauls to re-roll those to attempt to get uh, you know, those higher level missions for those higher rarity cards. Okay, These cards are permanent, Okay, and you want to be very careful breaking these down for prestige. Um, if you do break down these permanent cards, you are going to, those would be the cards, we'll, we'll show you some examples, uh, these are all permanent cards, okay? So you're going to want to break down these cards. Um, for common cards, you may not want to use commander overhauls on them, you might want to save your commander overhauls on the higher rarity. Um, cards to break down. In this case it uses four, but the prestige gained per commander overhaul, what is that? 90? 90 prestige? That's pretty good. Um, one commander overhaul gives you 10 prestige for comments. So the higher rarity gives you more prestige per commander overhaul. Um, but yeah, you're really going to want to break down cards. Let's go ahead and break down this one. Oh wait, I don't have any. Give me some. 
use some dev tools, grab one. You can break it down. And now you've got prestige. Um, there you go. Uh, you can also get a ton of prestige by completing dailies and achievements. I'm sorry, not dailies. Uh, well, I already went over dailies. Uh, achievements here, okay? Um, you know, there's a lot of prestige here. You really want to go. There are so many achievements. You're going to want to go through all of them. Um, and here's a fun one. So with those dailies that I went over earlier, right here, the daily challenges, if you roll quadruplicate challenges, you're going to get a ton of prestige. If you complete quadruplicate challenges, you get a shit ton of prestige. Look at that, 600. And the best time to do this is when you only have access to level 1s. So you're going to want to re-roll. Well, I don't have any commander overhaul cards. Uh, but you're going to want to re-roll while you have access to only level 1s to increase your chances of getting a quadruplicate uh, you know, basically the same mission, same daily, is discover a mission, discover a mission. So I would re-roll these two until I got discover a mission on all four, and I would get, bam, like a crap ton of prestige. So, you know, do that on your first day, you know, don't, don't, don't hesitate. Um, so, yeah, you can get a ton of prestige from doing these dailies. You can get a ton of prestige from breaking down cards. Uh, be wise, don't break down cards you're going to need later. Uh, save them or you know make that calculated decision uh, but also and more importantly you get prestige by building the commerce hub now the commerce hub uh, what it does is it gives you 0 0.2 prestige per hour per outpost level for each resource field within its radius of influence now the radius of influence base is one right but there's also a card, actually a couple cards, Entertainment Complex and Stock Exchange, which increase that radius by one. That is very important. Uh, I would say the Entertainment Complex makes sense if you're in your last month of the iteration. Uh, you know, it's a three-month alpha, so you know you 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 may consider using this instead of the Legendary. If you're into your third month, but for the first few weeks, you're really going to want this is probably your most important card to buy, because it increases your radius. It costs 1,440 prestige, and that's a lot in the early game, but it's totally worth it. Because let's do some math here, okay? Are we talking about Willy Gamish? No, we're talking about stock exchange. <laughs> oh, that card. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's take a look right here okay eh, it's not even a great spot well okay right here this isn't bad so if we build our commerce hub right here well if it's one hex radius I'm only hitting one field that's horrible right but let's apply that card uh, okay apparently I don't have com commodities so I'm just gonna add the outpost okay so that's not great. Zero, generating 0 0.2 prestige per hour. Well, we can do better than that. Uh, I, ooh, how am I going to give myself prestige? Okay, I know how. Gotta love my dev tools. Well, actually, I can just take the card. Yeah. So, give me that card. And we're going to turn around, after we craft that card, you know, use some of the influence you got from achievements. Use some of your, um, sorry, did I say influence? I meant prestige. Uh, from your, of your achievements to craft this card. Get that commerce hub out there. Upgrade it to level 5 as soon as you can. Um, you know, Stargate's also important. Uh, and so are mining facilities. But, you know, once you hit uh, an outpost level 5, you get one diamond nano rod back. So... Yeah, you really want to get a Commerce Hub up to 5 as soon as possible. And you're going to want to get several of them up to 5. So you're going to apply that card. Once you do that, look at that. I am now hitting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 is actually considered slightly, uh, I, I would probably say average. Uh, there are other people who are um, hitting 8 hexes. Some people are even hitting 9 hexes with their Commerce Hubs. 
And for each hex that they touch, it doesn't matter what's on the hex, as long as it's a field, not a planet or a moon, but as long as it's a field, you get 0 0.2 prestige per hour. So we can see right there, level 1, I'm getting 1.4. That's 0 0.2 times 7 hexes, that's 1.4, right? So now let's, let's upgrade that all the way to 5. Okay, that's level 5 Commerce Hub. Now we are generating 7 prestige an hour. Okay, let's go ahead and say we have an Imperial uh, ally augment that. So now we are making 7.7 .7 prestige an hour. You think, you know, that's not great. I can run one mission and get 7 prestige, right? But it's passive. You know, that's one less fleet making, uh, you know, that's that you're using. To generate prestige um, and with multiple commerce hubs you know let's say with four or five of these things what is that what, what is that going to be hold on let's let's do some math here there we go seven point seven prestige times Let's say we've got four of them, right? Four industrial stations. So we're, we're going to be making 30.8 prestige an hour, okay? And we so we constructed four of them, right? And we require 1,440 prestige per stock exchange we craft, so 5760, right? So that's our cost, 5760, okay? So... 30.8 prestige per hour total times 24 hours that's 739 prestige 0.2 that you acquire per day it's more prestige than i've had all game right <laughs> yeah, so suck. let's let's do that again so 1440 uh times four that's 5,760 prestige it costs to get those legendary cards to get your radius up there, right? So this is your investment, okay? You're going to divide that by 30 point, what did I say, 30.6? Roughly 30.6, let's just say 30, okay? 30 prestige per hour. So it's going to take you 192 hours or 8 days to recover your investment. Okay, eight days isn't bad though, because this alpha lasts for 90. After that, it's profit. I mean, you're making 700 prestige, 720 prestige per day, and that's not even including all the cards you're breaking down, the permanent cards, the mission cards that you're breaking down. It's not including the uh, prestige that you're getting through achievements and I mean right there that 720 is more than enough for an epic and it's you're halfway there for a legendary you're getting one legendary every two days um, guys I can't express to you how important it is let's see what you can actually use prestige for you know don't craft cruxes you know go for these stock exchanges get at least four of them you know go for five go for six even um, go for 80 Go. <laughs> well, you can't get that many, but uh, you're going to want a lot of these things. So let's go into, well, what can we use it on af after we buy these stock exchanges and build these outposts? Well, let's, let's think about stations first, right? What's great? Let's look at the legendary stuff, okay? You may consider one of your, uh, one of your stations having a traffic control tower, potentially one Stargate, you you know commodities are an issue so you may consider um, building one stargate and having its radius affect all your stations that's that's you know that's a legendary that's going to cost a lot of prestige uh, you're going to definitely need one of these sleeping pods or at least the epic version of it <clears throat> for housing all of your fleets in one station supply range you know if you're an imperialistic player uh, and you've got a ton of labor and you need to deploy all of your ships out to an alliance 
station or a Dyson sphere, you're going to need supply range. This is going to be really important. That's 1440 prestige right there. Um, habitation dome. This one's this one. I, I mean, you're going to need at least five of these, four or five of these, uh, if you're going to really fleet up for the mid and end game. You know, if you want to compete against the players who are going to have 20, 30, 40,000 ships coming your way, if you want to defend against that, you're going to need enough labor. And with the right setup, you're going to need this card to hit as many stations as possible with your habitation dome. Um, Apex mining laser, increasing the radius of your mining colony, uh, you know, allows you to hit that extra planet. Uh, when you have the right company in place, it allows you to hit even more uh, resource fields. So, like, you can see, like, these cards are actually amazing, and they're permanent. Let's look at epics. You know, for station cards, these two, right, uh, let's see, repair drones. This is uh, a, de a definite favorite, uh, especially for your capital station. If, if you are um, an industrial uh, spec on your capital station, you can have essentially four mining facilities out. And with this card, there's a great return there. Um, oh, shit. I didn't even have the rest of these. I thought I was short on legendaries. Um, I mean, look at this. Pyro processing, a 17% flat increase yield on all the resources your station produces. On, on everything, including outposts, including everything. Not just station harvest, not just basic production buildings, not just outposts, all of it. So, hell, even cards. So, yeah, this, this amazing. Um, wow. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. So, if you're telling me that that all works, how does it interact with Spinal Crux, which gives 50%? You know, that I don't know because I haven't yet gotten one. Uh, but I okay. would assume that the resource yield does, in fact, boost the Spinal Crux as well. Wow. Yeah. That's some value. Yeah. So, anyways. Um, we've got, uh, I mean, so many more epics here. Even, some epics, they, they don't even come in legendary versions. Uh, but they're still, I mean, amazing. You got increased radius on missile batteries. You got uh, station harvest radius. This is like the poor man's uh, version of the pyro processing uh, card. Where, where was it? somewhere around here yeah so this this is the preferred but for the poor man you're gonna go with uh, the migrant excavators and it can it can depend on your um, your build as well like your station placement um, so yeah I mean you you look at the cards okay you choose what you want you know my favorites Honestly, Admiral, if you ask Admiral, what's your, what are your favorite cards? I would say Repair Drones. I would say Migrant Excavators. Um, I would say, uh, well, let's, let's go through Stock this. Exchange. Yep, Stock Exchange, definitely. Um, you know, a lot of people love the Traffic Control and the Traffic Control Tower. Me, not so much. I can make do without it. Um, I like the High Command. Uh, I love the Filtration Installation. Uh, I plan on buying a lot of those. Uh, I love I, really gamish. <laughs> yep. I like pyroprocessing. I like uh, Apex Mining Laser. I mean, ah, shit. You name it. I like it. Um, but You like the, Spinal Crux? Well, I'm not going to craft those. Those are rooms. <laughs> so you don't like it. Well, I, I like them from missions, but I'm not going to craft them. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, let, I mean, let's look at the epics. And, and these are just station cards, guys. Um, you know, the, the fleet operating limit, that's really important. Um, and that's just station cards. Let's, let's look at fleet cards. I mean, and check this out. I mean, if you do the math, you're going to have up to 40 fleets, right? If you want those fleets to be effective, they're going to need at least epics, if not legendaries. Okay? And... Each legend, uh, each legendary costs three times the amount of an epic, so you can buy three epics for one legendary, basically. Okay, yeah, you can get by with just crafting epics, um, but.
but you're still you're going to run out of achievements to get pre uh, to get prestige from. You're going to run out of cards to break down. You know, build those commerce subs, guys. Like, I can't ex express how how important it is <laughs> that you get those things up and running as soon as possible. So, uh, what are your favorite common cards? Common. Ooh. Yeah, in case you're trying to scrape by. Okay, if you're trying to sca scrape by. Uh, well, if you're trying to scrape by, chances are you're still in the early game. Um, you're going to want to focus on cards that will uh, help you produce resources to get your uh, station up and running. You know, get get those resources like active fleets. Uh, maybe I would have... Uh, I can justify crafting a common card for... Let's see here... Raid speed plus two, so I could raid a bunch of other stations. Uh, EM crystal, launch pad. Yep, the EM launch pad, the crystal vault here, the core schematics, mm -hmm. the dozer exosuit, suit maybe. But if if I'm if I'm tough on resources, I may go with core schematics, crystal vault. Um, if I'm an imperialistic player, or even if I'm not, you can't go wrong with flare monitors. Um, either of these, it really depends on what choice, what route you're going for. For producing resources, and you're going to need active resource uh, production in order to keep your queues full. You know, at least. Okay. In the what about game. PVP cards on fleets? Uh, well, we're not quite there yet. It really depends on your spec. Um, for common cards. For common PvP cards. PVP commons. Yeah, I mean, you're really not going to want to craft common cards for PVP. You know, when you're going up against, let, let, here, let's take a look at a, uh, let's take a look at a card for, let's say a Corvette, right? So when you go, when you got like, oh hey, I'm gonna put 10 firepower in my hard slot, and I'm gonna put, let's say, 25 hit points in my hull slot as a common. You know, if I'm going up against a legendary guy, okay, he's getting. 40 firepower in his hard point and 100 hit points in his hull slot. And that's because he's got the prestige to invest in his fleet. Okay? Now, chances are you're not going to be able to invest in a legendary firepower and a legendary hit point on all 40 of your fleets. But tell you what, if you don't start investing in that passive prestige generation, if you don't break down the right cards and if you don't uh, run those missions, you're going to be stuck with, you know, maybe common, maybe some rare cards, maybe a, like a handful of epics, but not nearly enough to card your all 40 of your fleets and not nearly enough to make them really effective against those players who are running with nothing but legendaries and epics. You got, you know, you're going to have players coming in, hitting you with 30 firepower uh, or, um, you know, and, and 100 hit points, you know, on average. Assuming one legendary, one epic per fleet, I mean that's no joke, man. That that will make or break you. It's a multiplier mm -hmm. effect, you know. One that's... ship is that much more powerful, and so when you've got forty thousand ships, uh, that that much power makes a huge difference. Um, it, it can decide the best the part is the best part is about the uh, the card changes with the fleet is that you no longer lose any of your cards whenever you accidentally whelp your fleet. Yeah. So so those legendary cards aren't going to go away yeah. like they used to. Last Alpha, what he, what Dolls, uh, what Cannibal's talking about is Last Alpha, when you lost your fleet, you lost your cards. That was a painful, painful price to pay. Uh, but now yep. you lose your fleets, you don't lose your cards, and therefore it, it makes a lot more sense to really try to invest in getting the best cards possible. But what are you going to craft early or early on? You don't really need some of these early, and you may not need them as legendaries early. Um, for the players who want to raid a lot okay, for their resources, I would recommend one legendary plunder, okay? and the remaining epic plunders. Why do I say this? Because when you first start, you're going to get some uh, epic plunders, just like maybe one or two, and you're going to build up those fleets. Okay, And you're going to raid level one NPCs. You're going to try to bring in as many resources as you can. As you build up your fleets, your third fleet is going to have that legendary plunder. You're going to move all your ships 
to that fleet with the legendary plunder. You're gonna card with uh, you're gonna card that fleet for either epic or legendary hit points in both hard point and hull slot, and then you're gonna hit that level two NPC. That level two NPC, if you have the right amount of ships, is gonna get wiped out in the first wave, in the first of the three rounds, and you're going to turn around and with legendary plum plunder, particularly if you're a militaristic player and you've got, uh, where are we here, belligerence four, okay, 25% and 15%, that's 40%. Plus another 10 here, that's 50%. You can get 50% plunder as a militaristic player, okay, plus that legendary card, which was, what is, what did I say, 40%? Uh, yep, 40%. And then there's a building that gives you the remaining 10%. That's essentially 100%. You go in, you wipe out those NPCs, you are walking away with 60,000 resources up to. That's how much a level 2 NPC can hold. So, cha-ching, right? It's worth investing in one legendary if you can constantly raid and bring in 60,000 resources. But you can't afford th that card for every fleet, right? So, you know, once once you've got that one legendary, you just use that one fleet, hit those level twos over and over, all over the place, um, and then, you know, build up your other fleets, continue to use those other epic plunders on other NPCs, and when PvP starts, maybe you can use send all your fleets together. It'll average out your plunder and whatnot. So I won't go into too much details on PvP, but suffice it to say, you know, early game plunder is a great one for those militaristic players. Uh, for those imperialistic players, actually, really any player, we're gonna look at solar flares. So raiding is one way to generate resources in the early game. The other way actively to generate resources is solar flares. So you're going to want to gener uh, craft either the epic or legendary version of this card. Uh, and then you're going to want an epic and a legendary version of the cargo sh cards. What do I mean by that? So you can see here that this one's going to cost 1440 Okay, That's a lot. You might decide to go with the cheaper alternative, 480 prestige. Okay, but if you you these two actually stack because they apply to any uh, slot. So the plasma cargo always goes into hull slot. So you're gonna buy, craft, and apply this card first, right? Uh, and then you're gonna go for legendary cargo and an epic cargo and put them in the other two slots. Okay. Then you're gonna um, run some missions. and you're going to get ports, which will give you some speed and some more plasma cargo. Okay, That's all you need. That and just craft a bunch, uh, I'm sorry, uh, build a bunch of industrials up to 200 uh, for a starting fleet. And as you level it up, you can get to, get it up to 300 Okay, for any, any player, any policy. And you'll just with those cards alone, you'll be bringing in 35,000 resources every time plus uh, every time you run into a solar flare and those things spawn multiple times a day or they have a chance to so the solar flares are borderline cheating yeah they're very <laughs> strong honestly they're so strong honestly they for as little uh, as they require prestige wise and resource wise and ship wise um, they bring in so much resources they're uh, crazy yeah so you know that's what you're gonna do you need to spend your prestige wisely don't buy those runes you know and what, what do I mean by that Let, let's this is what people are doing okay they're buying hey I got some prestige I'm gonna spend 480 prestige and then I'm gonna get 420 metal per uh, for metal gas and crystal per hour for only five hours what is that 2,000 resources big whoop I mean that that's really? just that's throwing your prestige in the trash guys. I don't I, I don't ever want to see one NPC. Right. I, right, exactly. It's like one level 1 NPC. You might as well just <laughs> um well, anyways. So craft the permanent cards. Don't you know, don't craft these. 
ruins your characters. I'd rather it's like the honestly, it's a noob trap. So craft Willie. Yeah. So uh, when Early you first on. when you first start the game, what do you mean by that? When you first start the game, like literally the first thing you do, when you get some prestige, you can craft Willie Gamish, because he does justify the cost. It only costs sixty uh, prestige to craft, and um, you do get twenty of that back. Actually, a good majority of that back through achievements for crafting both a character card and, um, well, I, I guess that's it, right? Uh, I do that, Admiral. Right, yeah, and I, I did it as well. But literally, that's it. I mean, you don't ever want to craft characters or rune cards again after that. You, you might craft one rune card just to get the achievement, you know, and that's going to be a common. So, probably a Wither Crux. You know, even then, that's costing you 40 prestige. It might be worth the resources early on, uh, and you get the you get 20 of it back. But again, it's not it's not a habit forming mentality you want to have. You really want those permanent cards. Stick to epics and legendaries. Uh, sometimes you might craft a rare or a common if you're tight on prestige and you I need you need it for something very specific. Some cards only come in rare or uh, common, uh, like the core schematics. If you don't have one of these, you might actually craft this early on. It's only 60 prestige. You know, your first starting station, you grab one of these, you're pretty good. You know, it, it's 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 worth it. Um, so yeah, and there's another uh, achievement reward for that as well to help you carry over that cost. So yeah, I mean. Uh, Remember, 40 fleets times three slots per fleet, that's 120 slots. Uh, you know, <laughs> 120 slots times, let's say, maximum uh, 14. Oh, that's not right. That's 1440 times three slots times 40 fleets. That's how much prestige you would need to legendary card all 40 fleets. That's not going to happen, right? So let's say so, you're going to go the epic route, right? 480. And we're not even talking stations, okay? We're not even talking cards for your stations. 480, let, let, let's actually add stations in there, right? So 40 fleets plus, let's say, 16 stations times three slots times 1440 prestige per legendary quarter about a quarter million prestige and and uh, even that <laughs> easily is, obtainable even that is not including <laughs> even that is not including crafting things like mining cabal you know that that card that lets you have an extra mining facility outpost so yeah quarter million right if i was if i was generating 30 prestige per hour passively that's 8,064 hours, or 336 days. So, I mean, that's... That's about how long the alpha is, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, you're killing me. You're killing Can I interrupt me. very quickly? Oh, my God. Yeah, go ahead. Because I've got to get off. I, did you see the picture I posted of that new guy in my it, against my station? <laughs> He's doing comes. a live stream. Yeah. Oh, sorry, pal. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, man. Anyways, uh, so yeah, so I mean, you're not going to be crafting enough. You're not going to have legendaries for everything. Uh, let's just take the same dynamics. Let's say you're going to have you have 56 fleets and stations. So let's say half of that is going to be legendary, and half of that is going to be epic, right? So. What is that? 28 times 1440 times three slots, 121,000. And then 48 times 28 times three. What did I say earlier? 200. What? Thousand? She says, I don't know. You said like 16 different numbers. Ah, shit. Okay, so 40 grand. <laughs> Just remember 40 grand for me. So Forty grand. Twenty-eight times three slots times fourteen forty prestige, hundred and twenty. 
so plus 40 grand. So about 160,000 prestige divided by 30 prestige per hour divided by 24 hours a day. That's 223 days. Well, that's still that's still not enough. I mean, the the alpha is only 90 days, or the the iteration of the game is only 90 days. So, but keep in mind, you will get prestige through rewards. You will get prestige through breaking down other permanent cards from your daily rewards. Uh, you will not need as much prestige by getting lucky and randomly gra getting a card that you need for your fleets. So, you know, I would actually probably budget for around, uh, you know, uh, half epics, half le legendaries. But that's only if you build those commerce hubs. Okay, build those commerce hubs, build them, upgrade them, augment them. Okay, I mean, right now I'm getting over 30 prestige per hour, you know, and I feel like that's not enough. Uh, you guys, it's it's a very extremely important commodity. I mean, you can see what it can do for your stations. You can see what it can do for your fleets. Uh, the difference is there, and it 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 can make or break, you know, the game when you're going up against other players and, and they're coming in with legendary firepower and hit points and you're coming in there with common firepower or rare firepower hit points, that percentage difference will just win the game in their favor. So if you have any questions about Prestige, don't hesitate to reach out on Discord. I hope this was helpful. Um, you know, we went over some cards, some really popular cards for the early game. Um, oh, I got one question before you go. Sure. So, you are going to be making crazy amounts of prestige via the uh, stock exchange and all that. So, at any point, would that justify making Crescent Crux? No. Nope, not at all. No, nope. I would. I mean, I would never craft a rune or a character unless it meant uh, I needed to in order to save myself from being attacked or in order to save myself from being completely wiped out. I would never oh. craft a character or rune unless I needed to do that. Because Very as well. you saw, there are enough permanent cards that you need to craft uh, like to keep all your prestige busy, honestly. So, you know, maybe towards end game, if you're happy with how your fleets are carded, you might just craft that legendary character to help you on that last big assault. I could see that. Or that lag, last big defense. You know, you need to max max out the best that you can. You know, if all of your sheet, uh, fleets are on one station, right, uh, you can craft one legendary character to buff all the ships at that station. What do I mean? Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, and I got a follow-up question after that too. So ships, now you spurred my interest. Ships operating from this station gain two ten or fifty firepower, or and five twenty-five or one hundred and twenty-five hit points. Now, this doesn't sound strong, but it's legendary for a reason. Okay, imagine you've got that other legendary card that increases the number of operating fleets that you can have in your station on there and your station is level 4, you can have, what, at least 50 or 60 fleets at that station, and those fleets can be as much as 1,500 ships. So, you know, 1,500 ships times 50 fleets, and then you add this, mu multiply this bonus by that, that's a huge difference. So, I mean, that'll be way more powerful than any other one legendary you're going to craft for one specific fleet. All right, I think I might have just found a bug. So, you look at Mume Nakamura, right? Yeah. He looks like a pretty solid character. He lasts for five days, but he's legendary, and he gives 210, 50 firepower, and 5, 25, 125. Now go to Fleet Cadet and see what he does. All right. He's even better than Mume Nakamura. Well, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> card though 
No, he's a exactly. he's a character it's, card. It's a character oh, card. Oh, Mume is a yes. Mume is a okay. station card, so he will affect all of your fleets, okay. all of them if they're at that station. So they actually work great in tandem. You know, Mume is the guy telling the fleet cadet. In fact, if you look at fleet cadet, that's probably Mume in the background. <laughs> I think that might be a what's his name, the gunship guy. Yeah, what's his name? Uh, Fucking. Traxel or whatever the hell his name is. Let me... Felix Morel. Yeah, Felix. Like. All right. Well, anyways, uh, we'll end the podcast here, guys, uh, or the tutorial. If you guys, yeah, again, if you have any questions, uh, the chat has been quiet this whole time. Hey, I'm here. No, not the Discord, but the chat in uh -huh. YouTube. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Aren't you on the dev server? Yes, I am. That's probably why it's quiet. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah. Again, if you guys have any questions about Prestige, how to get it, um, and how to use it, don't hesitate to reach out on Discord. Um, share this video, like, subscribe, and uh, share share with your allies, your alliances, and other players. All right. Peace out.